Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Dental treatment on children requires that rapport be established early between the dentist and the patient. A good time to evaluate this relationship is during the radiographic survey. If there is any indication of a behavior problem, this is a good time to establish procedures to correct it. Cooperation is essential if an adequate radiographic survey is to be taken. The need for an adequate radiographic survey is the same in the child patient as it is in the adult patient. An adequate diagnosis and treatment plan cannot be made without a good radiographic survey. The problems and differences between children and adults go far beyond the differences of physical size. The child's attention span and ability to converse are considerations which often complicate any procedure. Care must be taken to explain to the child what is to be done and what is to be expected of him if he is going to cooperate with the procedures that you wish him to do. A good way to introduce the child patient to dental personnel and the office is the radiographic survey. The objectives of this presentation are positioning of the film and the x-ray machine head, the use of the snap array film holder, exposure settings for the x-ray machine as related to the child patient, and the need to recognize an adequate x-ray series. You should be able to answer the following questions from the two handouts you have already received entitled Pedodontic Radiographic Survey. What films comprise the survey for the very young patient to the four to five year old? The maxillary anterior occlusal film taken on the number two packet, the mandibular anterior occlusal film taken on a number two packet, and the posterior bite wing taken on the zero packet. What are the criteria for an acceptable posterior bite wing? The plane of occlusion should be located approximately one half way between the upper and lower border of the film. The film should include the distal one half of the cuspid anteriorly and the distal of the most posteriorly erupted molar should be included in the film. The film should be of average contrast and density, no overlap of proximal surfaces. What are the criteria for an acceptable anterior occlusal film? The middle of the film should match the dental midline. The incisal edge of the primary or permanent centrals should be projected approximately two to three millimeters from the outer border of the film. The central incisors should exhibit minimal elongation or shortening. Overlap of the centrals and laterals should be avoided unless anatomically present and the film should be of medium contrast and density. What information is to be gained from the anterior occlusal film? Missing or supernumerary anterior teeth are to be found. Possible radicular or periapical damage produced by accidents is seen. Periapical radiolucencies are seen and the presence of pathology in the anterior teeth and jaws is seen. What are criteria for acceptable periapical radiographs? The teeth for which the periapical radiograph is secured should include the full root length of the erupted teeth and as much as possible of the underlying succedaneous tooth buds. The occlusal or incisal edge of the teeth included in the periapical radiograph should be located two to three millimeters from the outer edge of the radiograph. 
minimal elongation or shortening of the teeth should occur. Medium contrast and density of all films. It is not the purpose of this presentation to cover problems of handicapped children or behavior management problems. With all x-ray series, whenever exposures are being taken, the lead apron should be used on the patient. This is the snap array film holder. This holder will be used to position films in the mouth instead of having the patients hold them in position with their fingers. The film is placed in the snap array so that the film surface is toward the biting surface of the snap array. When taken to the mouth, this will be positioned so that the film surface will be toward the x-ray head. The snap array holder has other uses besides holding the film in the mouth. It is a way to align the patient's occlusal plane in a forward and backward position. It is also a way to gain the angulation of the x-ray film head so that the proper relationship can be gained between the primary beam and the x-ray film. Before we go to patients, I would like to first give a short demonstration on graphics of the placement of the x-ray film in the mouth and the positioning of the x-ray tube head. This first diagram shows the positioning of the film and the head tube for taking the bite wing radiograph. The tube is positioned in a positive 10 degree angulation for the bite wing radiographic series. The occlusal view shows the relationship of the film to the teeth and the tube positioned so that the central beam will go through the contacts and open the contacts and eliminate overlaps. This overlay shows the area covered by the beam in relationship to the film itself. So there should be no problem with cone cutting or not exposing a corner of the film from the positioning of the beam below the area of the film. This diagram shows the positioning of the film and the relationship of the primary beam for the maxillary periapical x-ray in children. A bisection of the angle technique with the use of approximately 35 to 40 degrees must be used due to the fact that the palate in children is low and if a paralleling technique were used, the apices of the teeth would not show. For this reason, a bisection of the angle technique is used which adequately displays the apex of the teeth that are being x-rayed. This diagram shows the placement of the film and the tube for the taking of the mandibular periapical films. For the mandibular film, a minus 10 to 20 degrees angulation is used in order to throw the apex of the teeth onto the film. Again, as in the bite wings and the maxillary films, the primary beam is angulated to open the contacts and not cause overlapping. Again, this overlay demonstrates the area covered by the beam of the x-ray. This shows that there should be no reason for cone cutting due to not exposing a corner of the x-ray. Exposures in the following scenes are simulated in a studio situation. Under normal circumstances, the operator would not be near the chair during x-ray exposures. As with taking any x-ray survey, the first step is to place the protective apron on the patient. 
Prior to positioning the film in the mouth, if the x-ray head is set for the angulation desired, it will speed the time of spent taking the x-ray. OK, Amy. Open wide. We'll put the film in. OK, bite. Hold real still. Hold very still right there. Hold still. Here we go. That's a girl. Don't move now. Don't move. OK. There we go. OK, Amy. Keep the film in your mouth. There we go. OK. Now, for the second film, I want you to tip your head up. Look at the ceiling. Look way up. That's a girl. Now, bite on the film. Bite. Hold it right there. Now, we'll position the head. Before positioning it, align the tube with the film to find out the angulation that is the patient's holding. And then the difference between this and a minus 60 will still give you a 60 degree angulation of the tube to the film. Hold still, Amy. Hold still right there. Here we go. Very good. OK. Give me the film. Open wide. That's a girl. For the bite wing series, which will complete the radiographic survey for the young patient, the film is first bent slightly to make it feel fit a little easier in the mouth and crimp the corners. This will make it much more comfortable for the patient. Again, prior to placing the film in the mouth, set the angulation of the head to speed the procedure and make it easier for the patient. OK, Amy, open wide. Open wide. That's a girl. Real wide for me. Real wide. OK, bite. That's a girl. Hold real still. Very still, right there. OK, Amy. Very good. Hold still. Hold still. OK. The angulation, placement of the film, and positioning of the tube head is the same for the bite wing radiograph on the opposite side of the mouth. On the older patient, in the, the five to seven and a half to eight year old age group, the anterior occlusal film can be used instead of the number two size packet. The tube head is angled as it was before prior to placing the film in the mouth, again at a 60 degree angulation of the beam to the film. The occlusal film is folded in half to allow both the maxillary and mandibular x-rays to be taken on the same piece of film. The film is placed in the mouth with the fold facing out of the mouth bite, which eliminates distortion from an area that you might want to see. If there is some distortion from the fold, this distortion will be in an area that is on the crown of the tooth, which can be seen. OK, hold real still. Bite on it. Open, open, bite down. Now, good. Hold real still. Real still. That's a way. Real still. That's good. OK. And the exposure is made. Without removing the film from the mouth, bite. Don't, don't open. Tip your head up. Good. Hold it right there. Again, align the tube with the film to find what angulation will be required for the mandibular occlusal radiograph to again get a 60 degree angulation of the beam with the film. Good. Hold it right there. Don't move. Real still. Real still. Fine. OK. Open wide. Give me the film. That's good. The second film taken in the series will be the bite wing radiograph. As in the other series, the 
bite wing is folded slightly on the anterior edge to help conform more comfortably to the patient's mouth. The angulation is set for the bite wing series at a plus 10 degrees. Okay, open wide. Open wide, that's the way. Real wide, good, hold still, good. Close, bite, very good. Don't bite, bite on it tight. Don't move, that's fine. Position the tube head to open the contacts. Hold still, very good, very good. Take your exposure. The angulation and positioning of the head will be the same on the other side of the mouth. For the purpose of taking the periapical radiographs, maxillary and mandibular, the bite snap array film holder will be used. The film is placed in the snap array holder. Again, the leading edge is bent slightly to make it more comfortable. Before placing the film in the mouth, the angulation is set, open wide, very wide, that's the way, open real wide, mm. right, close, good, right there, good, very good, hold it still, real still, place the tube head in position to open the contacts, hold still, that's good, very good. For the opposite side of the maxillary periapicals, the snap array film holder will be inverted. The film will be placed as before in the mouth. For the mandibular periapical films, again, the film is placed in the holder. The leading edge of the film is crimped slightly. Angulation of minus 10 to 20 degrees is set on the tube head. Good, okay, here we go. Open real wide, real wide. Just relax, just relax. Open wide, don't bite it. That's it. Bite slowly, just easy now. That's it. Hold it, bite gently, just gently. Bite, close your lips. Bite down, that's the way. Good, hold real still, real still. That's fine. Okay, position the tube head, position the tube, and take your exposure. Open wide. That's fine. The same method will be used for taking the periapical film on the mandible on the other side. As before, the snap array holder will have to be turned over to put the bite plate toward the teeth and the x-ray film head. The following is an example of an adequately exposed radiographic survey in the middle mixed dentition. On the anterior occlusal film, the apexes show clearly. The midline of the patient's mouth is centered in the middle of the film. In the mandible also, the apexes are clearly seen. In the maxillary periapical film, the occlusal plane is aligned with the edge of the film, and the developing apical area of the secondary teeth is clearly seen. The same is in the case of the mandibular periapical films, which show adequately the developing apical areas of the permanent teeth. In the bite wing x-rays, the occlusal plane is aligned along the middle of the film. The contacts are open, and the crowns of the teeth are quite adequately seen. An example now of some mistakes which can be made when exposing a set of radiographs are as follows. In the occlusal anterior films, elongation causes the loss of the apex of the teeth. 
both maxillary and mandibular. In the periapical films, a mistake here is that the patient began to open his mouth, losing part of the apex of these teeth here. The same opening of the mouth causes a problem when taking a bite wing radiograph. Another problem with that happens occasionally is overlapping, which shows when the angulation, the mesial distal angulation of the tube is not proper. It closes up the interproximal areas so that caries cannot be detected. If the periapical films are not properly placed or placed at an angle in the snap array holder, the occlusal plane tapers and some of the apical areas are off of the film where you would like to have seen them. Also, if the film is placed on through the snap array holder, instead of looking at the apex of the teeth, the occlusal surfaces are occasionally seen, which isn't necessary in the periapical film. Some other problems which can occur are based on exposure time. In the younger child who is thinner, there will be shorter exposure times than in the chubbier, heavy cheek child where the additional fat pad causes additional filtration with the lightening of the film due to a lack of proper exposure. There is also a need to change the exposure time when going from one area of the mouth to another if, for example, the anterior occlusals are taken in a heavy cheek child. When taking the bite wing radiographs, a longer exposure time will be necessary because of the added filtration of the fat pad in the cheek. The following questions are based on information you should have gained during the course of this presentation. Where will bisection of the angle technique be necessary in the child patient? Bisection of the angle will be necessary in the child patient when taking anterior occlusal films, both maxillary and mandibular, and when taking the maxillary periapical films. What angulation is used for maxillary periapicals, for mandibular periapicals? The angulation for maxillary periapical films is 35 to 40 degrees positive. For the mandibular periapicals, a negative angulation of 10 to 20 degrees is necessary. Is paralleling used in children under 6? Paralleling is used in the young child under 6 when possible when taking the mandibular periapical films and when necessary for special films for special cases. What variables enter into exposure time? The area of the mouth being exposed, as well as the thickness of the lips and cheeks, are variables which can cause a shorter or longer exposure time being necessary. What angulation is used between the film and the primary beam for anterior occlusal x-rays? A 60 degree angulation is necessary between the beam and the film when taking an anterior occlusal film, whether it be maxillary or mandibular. What angular relationship is used between the points of the occlusal plane and the floor, and why? The angulation between the occlusal plane and the floor is one of parallelism. The reason for this parallelism is that the setting angulation key on the x-ray tube head will only be valid if the occlusal plane is parallel with the floor. How do you approach x-rays when dealing with apprehensive young children?
the apprehensive young child is best approached using the films that will take the least cooperation and irritation on the patient's side. For example, beginning with the occlusal films. These are easily placed between the teeth. The angulation is simple and there's no impingement on tissue. A following step is to go into bite wing radiographs with the last step being the periapical films. What makes a set of films unacceptable? There are several factors which can cause a set of films or a radiographic survey to be unacceptable. Overlapping of the contacts, the missing of the apex in periapical films where this is desired, the occlusal plane being at an angle through the film which causes the loss of some of the areas in a bite wing film or in a periapical film, and elongation. These all cause a set of films to miss points which are necessary when making a diagnosis and planning a treatment plan. Which area of the mouth is this snap array and film set up for? This setup is prepared for the upper right maxillary periapical or for the mandibular periapical on the left side. Which position in the mouth will this snap array and film setup fit? This setup will not work in any area of the mouth due to the fact that the side of the film which is shielded with lead is toward the bite plate and thus toward the camera. This will give a non-exposure due to the fact that the lead is shielded. Which area of the mouth is this film and snap array set up for? This setup is prepared for the mandibular right periapical or the maxillary left periapical x-rays. This has been a presentation of some of the problems and techniques required to get an adequate radiographic series in the pediatric patient. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.